Good morning, I'm Julio Sainz, along with Mauricio Riveros. Today we'll meet Christine Vargas from Vargas & Associates, who's built her own business after graduating from RIT. We hope you will be inspired. Celebrating leaders in Rochester's unique and vibrant business community, we'll meet entrepreneurs whose passion and perseverance have helped push through life's challenges. Join us as we share their stories and journeys to success. It's time to be inspired. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much to be in the Inspired, a show that we develop to interview people like you who are in business, who are uh, developing new things. Uh, Rochester is full of interesting people, and having the platform to be able to talk with people with you and learn from you is fundamental for us. So let's start with the beginning. Who is Christine Vargas? Well, thank you, Mauricio, for having us on tonight. Um, Christine Vargas, I am a woman-owned uh, company. I have my own company, and we are, um, we come out of a facilities uh, background that started with um, Rochester Institute of Technology. I have a background in industrial engineering, and I, through that great co-op program that they continue to have there, um, was introduced to the world of facilities. And actually dating back to my co-op days is where I learned how to manage projects. And um, after working for a while for another company, decided to go out on my own. And um, we're in our 16th year where we're, I'm leading a company now of project managers and interior designers, and I'm loving it. It's a great opportunity to have. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and you know, one of the things that I always uh, love to see is is woman-owned businesses. Uh, I, I see that, uh, especially penetrating an industry that is, has been male-dominated industry, uh, you are breaking the walls. And, and, and 16 years ago was harder than what is today, but yeah. still hard. So tell us a little bit, what was the journey? The journey. To, <laughs> well, um, me and, and kind of who I am in my makeup is... Um, you know, I'm a wife and a mom first. And so my commitment, even before I started my college journey was, um, if I needed to put my career aside, I would so that I could raise my family. And um, I was fortunate enough to have um, a boss who let me um, have some control over my schedule and be able to manage my own deadlines and things like that. So I really learned um, from early on in my career, how to manage that work-home balance. Um, but as I continued to have more children, got a little bit more challenging, and I needed to have even more control over my work-life balance. So I went on my own. Initially, it was just me. Um, fast forward, I have four children, and um, as you can imagine, it's um, it requires a certain amount of focus to cover all the bases, um, but I'm very fortunate that um, I have over the years developed a, a great working team, and we all we all work very well together. Um, I think part of um, having a woman-owned business company is also trying to help other women with that challenge, um, and understanding that at the end of the day, um, clients don't really care if you work eight to five; they care that you meet their deadlines, their schedules, that you're ethical, that you're a joy to work with. And so that's fundamentally who I am and what I created when I started Vargas Associates. Because you mentioned your team and um, one of the things I'm most fascinated by as, a, as, a, as someone who's started businesses myself, how crucial it is to grow your team strategically and in a good way. And you know, the wrong person can make or break you, especially in the beginning. What advice would you give to entrepreneurs, business owners around hiring and how you added people to your team? Well, we, um, in the early days, I had people that I knew had worked with, and that was a great advantage because you understand um, how they act under pressure and how they're going to um, interface and handle different things. But as you start to hire people that you didn't know, that I think was a big um, challenge for me is to understand how to conduct thorough interviews, really get to the heart of what makes people tick. And so strategically, you need to find people with the right skill set. Um, you have to understand what you can train 
and what comes with a person that you're not going to change. And so we, as we separated those things out, we try to interview more for what makes a great employee. And sometimes you really need to focus more on that because if that person's going to take care of your clients and they know how to handle relationships, um, maybe they're not great with, let's say, computer software. But I'd rather have someone that I need to help with computer software than someone who really doesn't know how to handle a customer. And, and then something you've built up over many, many years can come crashing down very quickly. So we're looking um, heavily at the actual person. And, um, and of course, the surrounding skill sets are important, but um, having great people and getting back to having the right people on the boss, that's really, um, it still it continues to be true today. And that is essential. You talk about teams, developing the right talent, having the people who belongs to the culture and really lives and breathe the culture of an organization is fundamental. Now, we are in time of transformation, innovation, technology. So let's talk a little bit about technology and how technology has changed your industry and specifically what you do. So um, I can look at technology a couple different ways. Um, obviously, if we weren't familiar with video conferencing before, we pretty much are now, right? And so um, we've been really fortunate that especially our design teams, they uh, were able to work from home. We can facilitate a lot of design reviews um, remotely, um, but also um, in today's world, you'd really need to be in the 3D modeling and being able to do fly-throughs and realistic um, you know, overview of the project and what it's going to look like. And we can do all that remotely. So having a really good handle on technology has helped us through this difficult time. And it's just the trend is going to continue to go in that direction. Um, in terms of other tools, um, there's times when you can overthink things and you can get into super complicated models when sometimes a, an Excel spreadsheet is, is perfectly simple, easy to manipulate, and doesn't require a lot of training. So we try to balance out what makes sense in terms of tools. Um, and, and as long as we're continuing to understand what's out there on the market and where there's potential productivity um, improvements, then uh, we're able to really stay super competitive in terms of skill sets. What are the keys that a company needs to have to build those long-term relationships? You have to invest the time. There is no doubt about it. And you just, you're just not going to get away from that. Um, we uh, also like to do a lot of volunteering. So at our company, we do ask everyone to be involved in the community. Um, it could be participating in fundraisers, um, helping coordinate events, um, getting out there and meeting people. And if you're doing it, you know, for an organization that you love their mission and it comes very naturally, you're just going to meet people. And over time, people say, what do you do? Where do you work? And um, it helps us get our name out there. Um, I'd also say we do a fair amount of um, projects for, for those organizations who truly do not have anyone to help them. So it tends to fall in the nonprofit. And each year, we more or less adopt a, a project and we will help do some pro bono work to get them through some of the key uh, milestones of a project. And um, right now, so we're wrapping up the commissary project down at the Sibley building. And this started out as we did some, just some concepts to help them get going, to do some fundraising. And quite honestly, um, I love their mission. Um, it's really um, a, a food incubator concept with a commercial kitchen. It's removing barriers for food entrepreneurs. And I couldn't walk away from the project because I knew they needed project management help. So we have been at the table help guiding them through the weekly construction meetings and all the little nuances around just keeping a project going, especially with this year in particular being really challenging. And so um, what I have found is we've built some great relationships. We've got some outstanding exposure 
not only through the commissary, but they are an offshoot of RDDC, the Rochester Downtown Development Corporation. And um, it's an organization that I hold near and dear. They have committed to really helping us continue to build up um, our community. And um, through, through these opportunities, we're meeting people and, it, and they get to know you, the person. So um, it comes down to time, being generous, um, being sincere, and you get, it, you, there's the whole adage, you get what you give. And so that's one of our philosophies and it's served us well. Well, thank you, Christine. We'll be back with more after these messages. That, that is a really special and unique project that I think has the opportunity to have a huge impact in the area. We actually had them on the show, I think, back in February yeah. or January. Mm -hmm. a great, mm -hmm. great project. Uh, for some of us who don't know as much about construction, like myself, I know we, both of you do, can, can you explain to us like what, what type of customer would come to you? Somebody who needs uh, what would reach out to you guys for? So we work in healthcare. Uh, municipal, K-12 higher ed, and corporate. And, and we do some other, like I mentioned, nonprofit projects along the way. So for instance, um, depending upon the um, type of organization, their size and complexity, there might be different junctures where they realize they're feeling like they're either getting in over their head or they're just so busy with taking care of their own client base that they just don't have the bandwidth. So um, they could come to us and say, we don't really have a facilities person on board. We know we need to expand, but I don't really know how to go about doing that. Can you help lead the way? So we come in and we become like a temporary extension of their organization and we become their advocate. We run the project as though we were part of that organization or company, and we're looking out for their best interests. Let's talk about uh, this COVID. <laughs> COVID hit us, COVID hit you, COVID, you know. So what was what was that moment in your company when we thought it would be a week or two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody thought, hey, it would be maybe a week, we just shut it down, and, and in two weeks we'll come back and everything will be normal, but uh, now we are months and it's not back to normal. Uh, yeah. What was the experience for your organization? Well, um, we made the transition home within a week, and it was the week when we started to see the number, okay, 50% need to work from home, 75%, and then 100 We just started the, the migration home. And by the end of the week, we had everyone set up. Um, we hats off to all the IT professionals who had to go through that for so many different companies. Um, but it started to get very real to me when we saw the federal government step in and start handing out the massive amount of money to keep people employed. That's when I knew we were in for something much more serious. And honestly, that's when we started saying, okay, we aren't healthcare providers, meaning doctors, nurses, and we could see what was happening. Um, you'd watch the daily news and you'd see the numbers climb. And we said, what can we do? Obviously we can't save lives, but there must be something we can do to help. So um, we started pulling together information about safety in the workplace under this new normal. And as different guidelines started to come out, we started pulling together presentations to help organizations navigate this. So as reopening started phase one, two, three, four, many were looking for guidance. And online, it's a little bit um, cumbersome to go through all the information and then apply it to your world. So we boiled it down and started giving some webinars. We started building checklists so that if you're opening up, you could say, okay, what do I got to do? Just really trying to make it as simple as possible during this really stressful time. And what we truly acknowledge is the fact that safety in the workplace took on a whole new meaning. And if people were going to come back and work, they now had a lot of 
different questions. So we really built that into the, these presentations to say, hey, if somebody's going to come back, they want to know that a sneeze or a cough isn't going to land in their airway zone. So how do we set up the office differently? Um, and so with that, we continued to um, evolve that to apply to some of the different spaces. So restaurants, uh, retail, um, education, and, and what have you, so that we could help those. And quite honestly, um, again, that plays into how do you um, how do you get out there and uh, become known? You got to give. You got to give back. You got to help. And so, even though there was a lot of work that went into that, that was all a gift to the community. We we didn't charge anything. We didn't ask. Uh, we just want to help. And there's still a lot of businesses that um, they're not back up and running yet. Uh, they, they either haven't been allowed or they're not ready. Their staff isn't ready. Um, we're waiting to see what happens with a vaccine. So um, there's still a lot of um, the impact of COVID still hitting us and uh, being able to get back to a normal environment is going to take more time. Yeah, absolutely. And I was really moved by how much you give back to the community. Where where does that come from? Where how's how's that such an essential <laughs> part of, of you and your and your business? You know, I think it's something I grew up with. Um, I I came from a large family. There were six children. Um, and as busy as my parents were, my mother always got involved. Um, what's interesting is, uh, you know, before there were women-owned businesses and Athena Awards and things like that, um, my mom was someone who stepped up and helped manage massive responsibilities. So she got involved in Boy Scouts with my brothers and became a den leader, and she worked her up and helped give um, a lot of time to the Boy Scouts. Um, we are... We were born and raised in West Aronicoit, and we all participated in Vince Lombardi football. So the Aronicoit Vikings it, um, was the organization, and um, she ended up being the first female president of a, a football um, team in town. So um, it was a lot of time, but she um, she knew not how to organize things. Maybe that's where I get my project management skills from. <laughs> And she wasn't afraid to step into shoes that traditionally were not really out there for women to take a leading role. And so for me to jump into engineering, I, I didn't even think twice about it because I felt like I can do anything. You just have to work hard. And then starting my own business and working in, a, in an industry that's so close to construction, which is predominantly male, I never felt like I couldn't do it. I always felt like you just go out there and you um, apply yourself and the rest will take care of itself. Fantastic story, fantastic. Yeah, and it's real, you know, it's really interesting because uh, it comes from the family and comes from the roots and come how you grew up and, and that is fundamental. So let me ask you this quick question. Mm -hmm. Where do you see your organization in five years from now? <laughs> in five years from now, well, before COVID hit, we were um, on a growth projection. Um, so we've pared back a little bit. Um, the corporate sector is where we saw the most pullback. So that's where we um, had to pull back a little bit. And I would say, though, in five years, um, the optimist in me is that we will have an economic rebound and we'll continue to grow as a company. Um, we have invested a lot outside of Rochester as well. Um, we have our Buffalo office. And um, my expectation is that we will continue to grow in both arenas. Um, we have um, extended our reach far beyond Western New York uh, because COVID has uh, really pushed us to reach farther, to have more opportunities to respond to. So given that once you break these barriers, um, then you're more apt to continue down those roads. So I could see us, um, 
I, it doesn't necessarily mean we would open a third office, but I think it would mean we'd be more open to going farther distances with our services. And with that additional reach, it supports additional growth. So that's our hope is in five years, we'll be beyond where we were when we um, changed course in March. That is a wonderful and as a leader, great vision. Uh, thank you so much for being in Be Inspired today. Uh, we have learned a lot. Uh, it's really cool to see in our community people like you who have worked very hard and also have contributed so much. Thank you for giving back to community. Creating the conditions and opportunity for economic development is product of efforts of people like you. This is the real United States, people who yeah. are overcoming you know, any challenges, any yeah. things, and they are looking for success. So thank you, and I'm sure, uh, Christine, we'll have you back in some point, and maybe learn earlier than five years, but we are seeing, we'll be seeing your vision making reality. So thank you again for the honor that you gave us tonight to be with us. Thank you, and I'd love to come back. Let me know. Coming up next week, we'll meet Matt Flanagan, CEO of Flower City Habitat for Humanity, and learn about their incredibly important work in our community. To watch today's episode and the complete interviews of our guests, go to rochesterfirst.com slash be inspired. For more great talk with Rochester's entrepreneurs, listen to Bodet 97.1, Saturdays at 9 a.m. For Mauricio Riveros, I'm Julio Sainz. We'll see you next week on Be Inspired.